Hey y'all, Phantom DC here, going to be reacting to Supernatural Season 15, Episode 15. So let's get to reacting. One of his weird, creepy ass creatures. Yo, get this chick out of here. Maybe she should eat outside, away from like people. Right? We have house rules about being clean to eat here. Yes, we have rules. But we also have spirit too, right? Exactly. Get out of Connor. Bro, this screams it. Why go down a dark alley? Come on, man. What? Hey, Connor. Yo. Last night, power goes out in Atlantic City. So, so local crews can't find anything wrong. There was no storms, nothing wrong with the grid. Still, darkness. Amora? Cash, it's been so long! Hey, right on time. Local cops can handle it. I <laughs> mean... So you know what, why don't you and Cass go run it down just to be sure? Really? What? Yeah, you, know, you said you didn't want to sit around here after the whole Mrs. Butters thing. This is what? Just get out there, you know, stay <laughs> busy. Long story. Agent Swift. And this is uh, Agent Lovato, FBI. Lovato? In the feel long, Lovato? There was a message. The kid, Connor, someone wrote the word liar on his body. So oh. Carved it in. Cut off each finger one by one. Shoved it down his throat. Really? We caught this off of one of the security cameras across the street. Uh oh. Is that a mask? Sorry, lads. Shop's closed. No more deals. No one made a deal. No, no one's making deals. Like, at all. Uh, Rowena has a hard people will end up where they belong philosophy. I can be nice, less quotas. Really? Look at me, a, a crossroads demon who can't bring in a deal? Like, wh uh, what even am I? <laughs> exactly. You're a deviant soul corrupted by hell. Come on, really? Oh, she next. Oh. She did. We gotta set her up for her own death. Hey man, Billy called us messengers of God's destruction, okay? Do you think that was what? Gonna be easy? Bloodless? Mm -mm. True. We knew there was gonna be a catch. Is that the pastor? The man you were. What's going on? It was a prayer dedication for one of our members just passed away. So either she Pretty did it close. or the pastor did it. I'm getting bad vibes from her. Damn, she's still alive. What is this, Saw? Ooh. Three hours. What I said earlier about Connor. Excuse me. Okay, they must have a path. It's just, uh, you were right. Connor and I, we dated hey. years ago. My mother. Yeah. I, uh, my mom died three years ago. Everyone's parents keep dying yeah, on this show. Pastor Joe. Has anyone else from this faith-based community gone missing? Uh, not missing, but people come and go all the time. Like who? I know, um, Brother Rudy, for instance. He handled most of our AV and tech. Connor didn't have to live in fear of who he was. A gay man who believed in a tolerant God. Well, I imagine not everyone was happy with the change. <laughs> no. Nope. by a mile. Like his daughter. Four grinds. Four grinds. Well, well. How would you find this? I smelled you from two states over. Really? You have a very distinctive mess. Yo. <laughs> so what, every three hours, another finger? Jack, as the newest member of Patchwork, I invite you to share your journey. Yo, you better not be too open. Found myself. 
lost. I didn't know what my purpose was anymore. And one day something changed, something amazing. I, I guess I found a family. And I became a father. No. Uh oh. Another finger. But this is weird though. Why he didn't show this for Connor? No. No. Not surprised. Don't betray him like that. The former death. He told us you were the first born. Or he told you what you needed to hear. Oh. Chuck and I were twins. Really? Creation and destruction. Light and dark balance. It, maybe I'm a fool, but I believe caging me hurt him deeply. Lust. Why did you bring her back? Oh. You said that you wanted to show me something. I wanted you to see that your mother was just a person. The, the myth you'd held on to for so long of a better life. A life where she lived was just that. A myth. No, we can't with your word. Oh, I thought having her back would release you. Put that fire out. Look at you. Just another cosmic dick rigging the game. Think he gives a rat's ass about you? Well, now I was living in a dream world. Yeah. Trust you? No. I would never hurt you. <laughs> I'll think about it. Okay, progress. So many frowny faces. This is so crazy. Can you yep, you're this? next. <laughs> Yo. Ah, uh, never trust it. Like you helped mom. Let me help you. Everyone's trying to help me. Who are you? You're nothing. You're just a scared little boy trying to make your daddies happy. And little do you know. What? Sleep. What are you? An angel. Yo. Chuck and Amora. I'll die too. Turning me into some kind of bomb. And when I go off, God and Amara will cease to exist. Don't tell Sam and Dean. <laughs> He's going to. They're, they're going to know. They're going to know. I know. Uh, he would eat cell in him. In case something goes wrong and I don't make it back, there's something you and Sam you need to know. Like, he didn't give it an episode or two. He was like, I'm telling him now. <laughs> so, not gonna lie, I enjoyed the hell of this episode of Supernatural. Again, could be biased because in the previous reaction, near the end of the episode, when Jack was saying his wish, my wish was to see Cassie L. In next week's episode, here we go, Castiel, back at it again, doing a case with Jack. And hey, I, early on in that case, I like predicted it was their daughter. Because when Jack interacted with her the first time, I'm like, it could be her or the father or it could end up being, you know, that tech guy. But the moment as the episode was progressing, I'm like maybe the tech thing was just to uh, you know, throw the wrench, even as, you know, Jack and Castiel even like went into his apartment or Whatever, hey, it was his apartment. Even they were even speculating, maybe it's not really him. And boom, he was like, probably, he was probably like one of like the very first victims. Because even when the um pastor was talking about, oh, if anyone has been like missing or whatever, oh, it was the um tech guy. And then it came to Connor. And then it came to the other chick who was freaking stealing. Like, come on now, really? Really? Like, eesh, eesh, eesh. But how it all ended is where they, okay, they arrested the daughter, but. 
that red eyed demon, which okay, for even we're talking about this red eyed demon now, no more deals for Arena. For ages they've been doing, you know, the crossroad demons and doing this whole contract thing, and now Arena's like, enough with that. <laughs> like, I can see Crowley rolling over, waking up like, what? No more freaking deals? We've been doing deals when I was raining even before then. And now that's just ending? Like, yo, I I, I highly doubt they're going to bring back Crowley. But if they do, yo, I would love to see where Crowley's talking to Rowena about, so this is what you've been doing <laughs> since you have now taken over hell. Like, oh, oh my gosh, still... Uh, still gets me that freaking Crowley's dead. But the whole freaking one more thing before I transition to that freaking whole Dean and Amora thing, which again, just seeing the actor and actress, you know, of Dean and Amara, love their scenes together. Truly love it. But Jack drops a bomb. Literally. He is the bomb, really. <laughs> when they talk about, oh, when all this stuff is done, you know, I'm pretty much a mom that's going to kill both Chuck and Amora, and I'm dead. I'll be gone. And that immediately reminds me, I forgot which season it was. It either is either season eight or nine or so. I know some diehards can remember it way faster than me. Of when Sam was doing the whole trials thing. And by the end, all the trials was done. He was supposed to die. But then Dean was like, no, 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 and it seems like it's going to end up being the same thing is my prediction, how the season's going to end. I don't see Jack die. If he does, I'll be shocked. And hey, but if not, it seems like it's going to be like a repeat of that. And then it goes back to what the empty said previous season or seasons again, where he was like, oh, I'll take you, Castiel, when, you know, when you're fully happy and whatnot. So who knows? Maybe the empty saw the future, maybe. Or I don't know. Or push into an existence. But if anything I can see that it won't be Jack dying. It's going to be Castiel dying. And him making sure that Jack will live on. He'll kind of like end up dying happy. And then uh, then the empty will pretty much take Castiel. That's how I'm seeing like the end game for Castiel's character. Like he will truly be dead dead. <laughs> no more bringing him back than doing so. He's pretty much going to sacrifice himself. So that, you know, Jack can live on. And if that happens, I'll be okay with that. Granted, I'll be sad because my boy Cassio will be dead. But in that situation, I can live with it, you know. But, ah, that journey to Amara and her saying what she had to say. Like, she's like, oh, I'm not going to freaking help y'all kill my brother. But <laughs> in reality, it's going to be your brother and yourself. And then the whole, oh, why you bring my mom back? Oh, it was a gift. Not really. Because, again, it was kind of a test hoping that bringing her back was going to change D, but hell, he's just even more furious, but hell, hey, at least more is going to help, <laughs> but oh my gosh, yo, this is going to be some interesting scene of events of how it's all going to go down to we get to that final episode of the final season of Damn Supernatural. I am Phantom D. Saint, and I am signing off.